are listening to the Sci-Fi Diner Podcast. And now, bringing you the latest in science fiction movies and television shows, here are your here are your here are your here are this is the capital. We have a little problem with our entrance and boots, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. I got a bad feeling about this. Walter, put the cow away, would you? What is this place? It's a freak show. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Diner Podcast. This is episode 147. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Herzog. And hello, I'm Miles P. McLaughlin. And tonight we are bringing with you, we are, are to you, a very special interview that we're doing with author Mer Lafferty. Mm-hmm. Mer Lafferty, man, people really should know this name. Who has she worked with before? Um... Well, she she's uh, recently done some work with uh, Christoph Lapuka from, from Leviathan Chronicles. Absolutely, and she's done work with Scott Ziegler. Mm-hmm. We've had Scott on. Right. We had a chance to meet Murr down at Balticon, right? Balticon forty six. Did you get a chance to meet her? I'm, I did not. I'm fine. I sure. did meet her, and what a lovely lady. And mm-hmm. I'm, I listened to part of her uh, series Heaven, mm-hmm. an interesting take on the afterlife. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, it's kind of a sci-fi fantasy take on the afterlife, mm-hmm. and it's been kind of cool. So. Before we give you that interview, though, let's talk about our trivia. Yes. So uh, we have a trivia that, you know, August 7th, you have August 7th to own a piece of Kate Vernon. Right. She a was signed a, photo. She was very kind enough to uh, sign, uh, give us this autographed picture of her and sign it. And so. Um, that was at Farpoint 2012. Farpoint 2012, not that long ago. Yep. And so you have to August 7th to mm-hmm. own her. And what did they have to do to own her? Well, we're going to keep our question, uh, Falling Skies, uh, focused. And uh, the question for this week is, uh, having captured Tom and the others during the raid on the armory, John Pope gives Tom this nickname. So, And what's the nickname? That's for you, our listener, to tell us. <laughs> and they have to include a code word, and that code word is what? Skitter. It is skitter. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, let's move into our interview with Mer Lafferty and uh, talk about someone that's been around the podcasting, patio book community for a long time. It's Mer Lafferty. Mm-hmm. And we uh, hope you enjoy this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, on the Sci-Fi Diner podcast, we delight in bringing to your attention interesting, compelling, and entertaining works of science fiction, and sometimes we're fortunate to meet and talk with those who create those great works. Well, tonight we're talking with such an author who has been nominated several times for a Parsec Award and is a member of the Podcast Pickle Hall of Fame and was this year a nominee for the prestigious John W. Campbell Memorial Award for Best Science Fiction Novel of the Year. Tonight we're talking with the uh, author, Ms. Burr Lafferty. Ms. Lafferty, welcome and thank you for taking time to talk with us on the Sci-Fi Diner podcast. Thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's it's definitely great to have you. It was great meeting you at Balticon when we got a chance. I got a chance to sit in on the uh, panel you were uh, with the GFL series. Um, mm-hmm. I, know, I know that you're working fun. with that. Yeah. So that was a good crew with a, quite a diverse group of authors that you had in that panel. So. But. Yeah, I think that's what uh, that's one thing Scott's been wanting to do is get different kinds of storytellers to tell stories in his world. I mean, my story that I wrote was not um, did not have anything to do with football. It was a sort of reporter paper, and um, I know Matt Wallace did not write anything about football. He wrote about uh, uh, mixed martial arts. So it's it's. Scott is, is getting us to play to our strengths to, I mean, it's not just a world of football. And I think that's what he's trying to show people. Right, right. Absolutely. Well, Miles, why don't you go ahead and ask? Sure. First question I have for you, Ms. Lafferty, uh, we do want to talk about your work, but first we'd like to know more about you. What first got you into a science fiction and fantasy and uh, what have you enjoyed in the past and what do you might be enjoying now? Um, 
I've been thinking about this a lot. I I realized what you could do with what you could do with writing. Like I would always read the um, Beverly Cleary, Ramona Quimby, and Henry Huggins books, but I never thought about being a writer until I started to read things like Ari Glenn Top by Madeline Engel or The Hero of the Crown by Robin McKinley. And then suddenly I thought, wow, this is awesome. I could do that. And um, from then on, I just started grabbing a lot of science fiction. Um, I read the Pern stuff. I read more uh, Lingle. I read anything of hers I could get my hands on, even her non-speculative fiction. Um, and uh, I just really wanted to get into what they did. I wanted to, to make the magic that they did. And then... Um, started reading Douglas Adams a bit later in my teens and he's a big influence of making me want to write humor and right now I'm most influenced by uh, Connie Willis, Neil Gaiman and China B. Abel for various reasons hmm. cool. Very cool uh, Now many aspiring writers have taken up taken to uh, podcasting their work uh, You were one of the first ones to do this, a pioneer, can you tell us uh, what got you into podcasting? Well, podcasting began in 2004 in August. That's when they, they started putting the enclosure in the RSS feeds. And then October, I was chatting with a friend and asked what he's been up to. And he said, he's kind of obsessed with this new podcasting thing. And I said, what's well, podcasting? And I learned about it. And it took me a couple of months to get my head around it and what I wanted to do. And then I um, started my own show in December. And what I wanted to do was was put out my essays that I write about basically living a geek life. And um, when I did that, I could never get them published. And you know, of course, looking back, they weren't that good. But it was fun, it was fun to write, and uh, I figured this would be a place. The podcasting would be a place I could definitely talk to geeks. And um, there weren't a lot of people doing it, so I might get listeners just out of people being bored. I got to admit that was that was a draw. Being one of the first was like, hey, how many people are doing this? I think I'll jump on. Cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, your first podcast then. Well, my first podcast was called Geek Coup Action Grip that I decided to be part sort of on the blog just which is the, the loose term of say whatever I want to, whatever's on my mind, and part uh, essay. So I would do, I would talk about the show, talk about, blah, blah, sorry, I would talk on the show about whatever I wanted to, and then I would read an essay, and I would do this about every week. So um, it was, it would try to be humorous most of the time, and it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and then since then, you went into, uh, you, you did other podcasts beyond this then, right? Yeah, I've done a lot of podcasts <laughs> over the years. Um, I was the family editor of Pseudopod, which is the uh, premier horror podcast magazine under the Escape Artist umbrella where Escape Pod is, is started everything. Um, and I do my uh, podcast, I Should Be Writing. I started that in 2005 and I'm still today where I talk to um, new writers about the business and the, uh, you know, the, the mental state you have to be in to be a writer. There's a lot of people out there who think that, oh, I've got a rejection. Clearly, I'm suck. Clearly, I can't do this writing thing I'm going to do now. And my podcast is there to go, no, no, that's not what you need to be thinking. And I'm still doing that now. And I've done, um, I've done fiction podcasts. I've done, uh, I, I stopped doing Pseudopod. I, I got a day job in 2007, which meant I had to get back on my podcast. So I quit Geek Fu and I quit Pseudopod and kept I should be writing and my fiction. So um, now I'm, and then, then I had that job just for a year and then I got laid off again. And so now I'm uh, the editor of Escape Pod, which is the science fiction podcast magazine under Escape Artists. So I've moved from horror to science fiction, and um, I've been doing that for about two years now. But I'm doing Angry Robots podcast with a lovely author interview. Hmm. 
Now, anybody who is a podcast or a listener of podcasts for any length of time knows uh, about the Parsec Awards. Oh, well, I'll ask that question again. Scott's you have to excuse my son just bur- just uh, just mm. barreled in here. So, <laughs> go ahead, Miles. Anybody who is a podcaster or a listener of podcasts for any length of time knows about the Parsec Awards. You had a hand in creating these awards. Please, please tell us how that came about. Well, I was. Um I guess it was 2005. I'm not sure. It was well in 2005. We were thinking um, people started creating awards for podcasts. Uh, uh, I don't remember what they were called at the time. It might have been podcast peer awards, but it might have been something else. And they were, you know, best comedy podcast, best finance podcast, best parenting podcast. And I noticed that they were not doing anything related to either science fiction and talk or um audio dramas or fiction. And by then you had Pat Sigler and T. Morris and Matt Wallace and myself doing a lot of uh trying to do releasing fiction. And uh it's not it's not that we didn't get nominated, it's that there was no place for us to be nominated. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 not it wasn't even sour grapes that, that you know there was a, a category we weren't paid attention to. There simply no place for the fiction to go. And so I was complaining about this to Michael and Lenge from Dragon Page, and we came up with the idea to uh, create our own award called the Parsecs. Well, actually, we, we, we pulled Tracy Hitman in because uh, Mike, was his, Mike was friends with him, and so the three of us came up with the Parsecs, and, um, yeah, we, we, that, that, that's how it started. So that was, it, was, it was odd starting an award. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, I think we, we had a lot of stumbling blocks, and uh, but I think I think it's I think we made something that lasts. It's it's a tough it's a tough thing to handle. I really admire the people who are in charge of it now because they've made it bigger and and shinier than I ever thought it could be. And I'm, I'm I'm proud to have started it, but there are other people who've done a lot more work than I have. Well, I mean, the Parsec Awards are huge now. I mean, this is given you know sci-fi. I mean. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I, 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 if I understand you correctly, I mean, this is giving a chance for sci-fi it, its due that it wasn't getting before. Right. It's a place for science fiction. And, um, you know, now it's branched into talk shows about science fiction mm-hmm. and new science fiction and music, genre music kind of thing. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's embracing the geekier aspect, you might say, but it's still speculative fiction and focused. And um, you know, it's just it's just fantastic to what it's grown into. You know, Laura Burns and her team have done just an amazing job. Well, we need to thank you because uh, we, uh, we 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 were finalist in in, in last year's uh, Parsec Awards. So yeah. uh, um, so so, th- well, so th- thank you for you know help helping to create those. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, well, you're welcome. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I think I like so much about the Par Six is it's not based on a popularity contest. You may have mentioned this too already, but I, I like the idea that you know it's based. It looks at a podcast. You can be a new podcast with you know very limited audience putting out a quality show, and I mean that's really what the war the words begin to look at something more than oh this podcast is ten thousand listeners. This one is three hundred. Yeah, the, well, that's exactly why we did it. We didn't want it to be a uh, popularity contest. I think one of the ones out there was um, you, you can vote once a day. And so people started flooding their podcast with, vote for me every day at this place, please. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that, you're just annoying your listeners. You're certainly <laughs> annoying me. <laughs> and uh, And I was obviously a listener because I was hearing all of this crap. And I thought, you know, there were... Even, you know, in the first year, there were people who were getting thousands and thousands of listeners, but there was still quality stuff coming up in other places. So that's why we thought a juried award would be good. And so with Mike and Tracy's contact, we were able to get a pretty good jury to help us judge the award. And I remember the, um, the funniest thing was, I won't say which one it is, but the, uh, there was one vote there was one category that first year that everything was tied and the judge had not reported in. And I was just desperate to get a deciding vote on this. And um, 
the judge apparently was also desperately trying to get in touch with me. And I was a icon, and she started calling on all the hotels, asking for me. And finally, she called the right hotel, and my room phone rang. And she's like, hi, this is Chase Patterson. I'm looking for Mary Lafferty. <laughs> and so I, I had to get take her votes from the phone to decide who was going to win um, that category. So that, and that was like 2, 2 p.m. and the award were 5 p.m. So that was exciting. Oh, I'm cutting a little close. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But, well, that's awesome. Well, let's move on to some of your your work. I mean, obviously, you mentioned that you were writing essays um, and kind of sharing those as one of your first podcasts. You you obviously made the transition into into book writing and and doing uh, these podcast novels. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, maybe the first one you did and what it was like to bring that one into podcast form for you? I think the first one I did was Heaven. Um, I had this other, I had another piece of work called Playing for Keeps, but I wanted to sell that. And I was afraid if I podcasted it, I would not be able to sell it to a publisher. So I thought, what if I write something specifically for a podcast? I don't need to worry about, um, you know, I won't have that feeling that I've lost something simply because I wrote it specifically for podcasts. And that made it more palatable in my mind. And I also thought that podcasting automatically gives you a serial view of things. Like, you know, it's not it's it's not like a novel where you could just keep going. You have to, at least when it's being released, you have to deal with the serial aspect of it, like the way Charles Dickens wrote. And so I thought I would write in the serial fashion. And I kind of failed with that because after about the episode I was already getting into is like a general arc more like chapters of the novel but I, I mainly did it as an experiment and um, it was a lot of fun and its popularity kept growing so I eventually did five um, novellas of, of the Heaven series and it's, it's it's not my most downloaded piece of fiction but it's the one I get the most email about it's, it's the one that people love the most yeah, well, it definitely was. I mean, Miles, you listened to at least part of at least book one, I believe. Yeah, um, definitely, it's, it was interesting because we don't see science fiction, or you maybe classify this as fantasy a little bit, really playing into the afterlife, like like yours did, and so that was, I, I think, gives it a little bit of a unique edge, and then and then to. Have you know heaven be exactly? I don't want to give too much away here, but for people that haven't listened to it, but to have heaven be exactly the way we pictured it, it, it not not really being a reality, uh, is kind yeah. of an interesting exploration. Miles, any? You, go ahead. I, I kind of thought of you know, almost a what if story. I mean, if you know, if you go to heaven and you know, your heaven is the way. Your your what your ideal version is, but maybe not the same as somebody else's, and and the, you know where you're taking these two characters, you know, seeing you know, checking the other heavens out. It's just uh, you know, uh, it, it, it grabbed me right away. Thank you. It was um, frankly, it's, it's just a feeling of I I always felt kind of frightened of the idea of heaven, honestly. Just because it, it it seemed like, you know, I'm a writer, and so I know that stories are um, stories are conflict. You know, we get all excited about stories, but honestly, they're stories are not happy happy things. They're they're conflict and pain and suffering, and then you know, either redemption or some other. Um, some other ending, but it's nothing is just easy and simple. Everyone gets bored with easy and simple. Even if you want a happy ending, you've got to work to get there. And so I always wondered if you get to heaven and that's a happy ending and, and there's no further conflict, there's no other reason to do anything. And I'm sure if it does exist, I'm pretty religious, but if it does exist, I'm sure it's probably a reward of some sort. But I'm more think of it as a uh, I, I just got you know when I was little I just got frightened at the thought right. it's like that sounded so incredibly boring so that's I, I took that um, that concept and, and ran with it yeah, 
know, I, I definitely I love the idea of this this key that allowed them to, like to transfer trans you know kind of you know travel between the different heavens. It was very cool. So and uh, and so I love the exploration. You know that had to as you went through the different religions. Did you do a lot of research to kind of frame that out for you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, honestly, uh, I, I held back a little bit. I was a little afraid of uh, offending too many people. And so um, I didn't do a ton of uh, existing religions. Uh-huh. Um, I did a couple, but I did not do any that the, I, I didn't touch on anything that, um, that I didn't know a lot about and were current and, even if I did research, I feel like I would screw up and piss somebody off. So I did a lot of mythologies, but I did do a lot of research into the mythologies, right. uh, world creation and afterlives and the gods and things like that. So that was a it was I, a lot of fun doing research. I love I love reading mythology. That's really what it was. Do you know? I uh, so I do have to ask. I, you know, it says the series has been out, and you said you've got a lot of email. Have you pissed people off <laughs> with the series? <laughs> No, I haven't. I've had people tell me they're atheists and they love it. I've had people tell me they're devout and they love it. I've had somebody tell me that they didn't agree with it, but they liked it. And I'm like, it's not, it's fiction. There's, there's nothing to be with. It's, I'm, I, I don't have an agenda here, really. Um, you know, even then, they liked it. it was, it's been pretty, pretty universal. I, would then, I, I, may have got, I, I may have gotten some... Uh, Bad reviews on Amazon or Goodreads, but I try not to read those. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, well, now, so the, you have the Heaven series out. What other uh, is there anything in the pipe right now that you have that's coming out, or that anything else that you want to talk about that you have out that um, a, you said that it's not necessarily the most downloaded. Do you have something that's a bit more downloaded for you? Well, I released uh, my superhero book. I tried to get an agent to sell it. I couldn't get an agent. So I released the superhero book playing for keeps on pod, yeah, podcast in late 2007. And, um, in 2008, a publisher contacted a small press contacted me and said, we'd like to publish this. And I went, Oh wow, really? And so that came out in late 2008 and that's called playing for keeps. And it's kind of a superhero satire kind of thing. Um, and, that's that. That's probably been my most uh, popular thing. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I released a book, uh, a novella via um, podcast called Marco and the Red Granny, and that's a sort of uh, arts and patronage on the moon with gladiator fighting and a octogenarian blood sports champion. There's a lot in the novella, but uh, it's it's some of it's, it's also it's not as is my other stuff, but people who read it seem to really, really like it. So it's uh, the, that's that's at least gratifying. But um, as for new stuff, I'm working on a lot of stuff that won't see the light of the day for a little while. Um, I, re- I recently wrote the report for Scott Sigler, and so if you're an NFL fan, you can get that. And, and um, yeah, I've got a book coming out with Orbit in uh, May of next year, and I just turned in the final draft of that, and I'm going to be writing my second book on my contract soon. Um, I'm working on a novella that I workshopped the first 80 pages um, in my MFA program, and that was pretty good, so I think I might continue with it. I'm not sure what I'll do with it, though. I might try to sell it before I podcast it. There's something about selling things that gets you money that right. I like. <laughs> yeah, podcasting really just doesn't do that unless you can kind of uh, do what uh, some podcasters have done is you know create the following and then they buy the book, right? Right. But, exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, you also are doing a little bit of work with the uh, you know uh, the Leviathan Chronicles. Can you tell us anything about that without spoiling it? Well, uh, Leviathan Chronicles are a an amazing professionally produced audio drama science fiction series, and um, it's got a full like maybe twenty four hours of content out for its first season for free. And um, Christoph Lapuka, the producer and writer, knew I was a fan and he knew my work, and so he approached me to do 
a standalone adventure that he was going to uh, put out for sale. And then he asked me to do a couple more. And so I've written three? Yes, three. Three so far. Uh, two of them are out. It's called The Rogue Plague, which is, uh, if you are uh, if you're a Leviathan Chronicles listener, this is the Harlequin origin story. Right. And uh, then there's The Ward, which is also a Harlequin story, but it's more uh, current. And um, then I I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about the one that I have finished for him, but is not finished yet. Uh, we probably shouldn't. But I'm working. But I'm working on a pretty big one now. It's, it's the biggest, as in uh, importance to the plot and longest in in length episode that I've worked on yet. And I'm working on that right now, and that's pretty exciting. So um, I love working on the Latin Chronicles. It's a great, the great world to play in. The, the characters are just all kinds of interesting, and um, it's it's Christoph Lev. Christoph gives me a lot of, of leeway. You know, I'll run a wacky idea by him, and he'll get all excited and say, go for it. <laughs> so um, really, really like working with those guys. Yeah, yeah. I've heard both the, the ones you just mentioned. Uh, they, they were quite good and enjoyable, so uh, you know, I can't wait to the next one that comes out then. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're huge fans of uh, Leviathan Chronicles. A lot of our listeners are too, so mm-hmm. we're, we're definitely looking out for uh, season two when that comes down the pike for us as well, so – uh, now you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, you know he, uh, pitching ideas and kind of you're, you're playing both with Scott Ziegler's universe and with with Christoph's universe. You're playing in someone else's universe. How how is it to play in someone else's sandbox here? Well, I have experience with role playing games, and so uh, my first professional uh, writing jobs were role playing games, and so it's not too alien for me to read out somebody else's rules and create stories within that. Um, in fact, it's really interesting because it's a challenge to stay within the boundaries, but it's also, you know, you get to relax a little bit because you don't have to worry about um, the splithead's origin because you already you already know that, that, you know, Scott knows it, and if you need to know what he will tell you as much as he wants to. Um but still, it's like, if they haven't fleshed out some something in the past, and considering the Leviathan Chronicles deals with immortals, there's a lot of past there. And so I can say, did X ever happen to this character? And Chris can say yes or no. And I say, well, can it? And he's, he'll say yes or no. So um, I don't know. It's not, I don't find it that difficult because I've got the experience with role-playing games. But um, I think it's fun. It's really... It's like you know, it's like licensed fanfic. Oh yeah, oh, you get exactly. to take you get to take characters that you love and take them in places that, as long as the editor approves, you know, you can take them in places that you want them to go. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, before we before we uh, wrap up the interview, and I did want you to have you weigh in a little bit about um, the digital versus paper thing that you see you see going on here. Um, obviously when you're releasing books, uh, your books are being released both in paper format, I'm assuming, and then also digitally, especially with, um, I think the reporter was available as an available on Amazon, right? Yes. And it was, was that available as a paperback? No, it's ebook only. Yeah. Ebook only. So, I mean, how does this, how do you feel about this? I mean, where, where are you at with this whole idea of you know, paper versus print. I guess that's the same, but paper versus, you know, things things are, well, well, things are changing, obviously. And, uh, no matter what I or any other writer wants, things are changing. And I think it's our, our role to work within that. I'm not somebody who's going to be a buggy whip creator and, and whine about how things should not change because they're not convenient for me. Um, even though I know that, that searching is easy with an ebook, sometimes I just like flipping through books to find things. You know, I'll, I'll buy a book when I want a book, but sometimes ebooks are more convenient. Um, you know, I think the publishing industry needs to get up to date on number one, how to, how to make them well. 
how to take advantage of the technology because they're not doing that. Number two, how to work the, work the contracts, compensate the authors, etc. Because now that there's digital, technically something doesn't have to go out of print. So you need to, if, if you're an author and you get a book deal, you need to make sure that there's an out of print clause for ebooks. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question here. It's just no, there's a lot to think about. What well, is? It's, and, a, it's um, a huge question. It, it is shifting, and we have. To, I'm trying to stay with it and not fight against it because it's a huge tide, and I'm not. You know, little old me is not going to swim against it right. successfully. Right, right, right. Well, Mert, we want to thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us tonight. Uh, want to talk? Where can people? Where can our listeners find out more about you, your work, and maybe get a hold of some of your books and help support you a little bit? It'll be merverse dot com. That's all my stuff. Everything links to everything that you need is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mer, thank you so much for chatting with us tonight. Well, thank you for having me. It was fun. Yeah. But I did read that you, you're a martial arts practitioner. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yes, I do uh, Kung Fu. Great. And, and I love it very much that I skip tonight because I feel lousy. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I do it. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. And I don't ask, so. Yeah, well, she knows Kung Fu, right? There you go. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with the murder.